we're back out at the shop getting ready to get some stuff done today. Um, some parts showed up over the week, so uh, I haven't been out here much throughout the week other than just to drop parts off, and I had to measure a few things. But uh, some of the stuff that showed up was uh, I got my air pressure gauge finally for the uh, uh, air tank and the swing arm. Uh, I ordered a bunch off of Amazon that were nothing like the description. Uh, oh, luckily they were cheap, so we'll just use those for another project. Put them over there. Those will just sit in my way for about a month. Um, but the one I finally found was, I remember from back in the day, um, playing paintball, uh, they had small gauges that were on some of the guns and tank setups. So I did a little research on some of the brands I remembered, which was a chore in itself. But I found this little fella. It's just a 0 to 150 PSI gauge, nice and small. It's only got a, the, uh, the head is only, or the face of it's only about the size of a quarter. But uh, I run my air shifter at like 150 PSI, I fill that tank up to. So needle will be right in the middle, it'll be easy to see. Um, nice and easy. It looks, looks pretty good on the bike, actually. So I'll run that for a while. If it ends up being too small or something, I'll just switch it out to something different. But I was kind of glad I found that. It was a neat little score. Um, got my new front sprocket from, uh, actually the sprocket and the chain showed up from, uh, Ligori Drag Racing. And I can't thank him enough for just how fast he ships the stuff out. Um, it's just great to have somebody like that in your corner when you need stuff. I basically don't even look things up anymore. I just send him messages and say, hey, I need this. Do you have it? And he gets it for me. So that's pretty slick. I run a ZX-14 front sprocket on this thing. I know it's a Suzuki, but, uh, I run a Robinson Industries heavy duty output shaft. So it's got a bigger spline. Thankfully, it's a, a common bike. They didn't go with something weird. So ZX-14 sprocket on the front. That'd be easy to find. Last year, I ran a, a different sprocket, and I ran it all year just because I didn't know, with all the learning I was doing with the turbo setup, I didn't know what the bike was going to want for gear ratio. And uh, now that I got kind of one season under my belt with it, uh, I know what it wants. So that's new sprocket will go on this weekend. Here's the new chain. Um... Uh, I talked to the guys at Green Bay Anodizing just up north from where I live here. Uh, probably going to send this thing out get it treated, but I think I'll I'll get it on the bike and uh, fit, see how, how much i got to cut off. I ordered a little bit extra long. I wasn't sure what I was going to need, but I'll make sure I send him just what I need and then maybe a little extra. for uh, If I need to change wheelbase on the bike at all, I'll have a little extra link piece that I'll send that I can add in or remove from the chain. And then... I did manage to work on one thing this week, but it wasn't at the shop. I did it at work. I uh, stopped out here to get it and went to work, but I worked on my seat pan. So check this out. There she is. So the old seat pan, or actually the old version of the seat pan, had the, uh, the rear hump area here. It was actually just kind of a square box that was sitting on here. Uh, the old setup on the bike actually had this was built... And uh, the ECU was hidden kind of underneath the box on the seat. Um, just because of how the subframe was built, the ECU was just a little wide to fit in there how I wanted it to. So the ECU actually sat on top of the subframe and was tucked up in behind this squared area of the seat. And uh, I had made that, or I made that seat pan kind of in a hurry. So it wasn't just, wasn't real pretty looking. So I took it to work and cut it apart and redid it kind of how I had always envisioned it looking. So... It's nothing super fancy, but you can see I kind of added some contours here. I cut this front piece out, angled that a little bit so it didn't hit my tailbone so freaking hard. And then you can see the sides, I tapered them out to hit the end of the pan. Um, I don't do enough drugs to work in carbon fiber. I'm a metal worker, so I made it out of some thin aluminum. And uh, I think it turned out pretty good. The uh, old version... This was actually boxed in solid on top. And if you've ever been on a bike with a seat pan or anything with a carbon fiber, fiberglass, wicker, uh, yarn, whatever, seat pan, um, especially a, a forward seating version, uh, the, uh, the suckers kick off some heat. Like they absorb and just all the motor heat from underneath just radiates up. And I still street ride this bike a little bit. So that was kind of an issue if I was cruising around town. And uh, even at the track, just as the bike's, you know, retains heat throughout the day. Every time you get out of it in the lanes, you know, things freaking hot. So I went ahead and I opened up the back side of this. So the bottom is open now and the back side is open. 
So I'm hoping, in theory, in my small little world, I hope that I sort of created a little bit of a, a little bit of a path for the engine heat from underneath on top of the trans area behind the cylinders. Hopefully that air can kind of just get out and escape out the back side of the seat without radiating into the pan too much. But we'll see. I'm basically just going to sit in the staging lanes and pound farts into this thing. So what does it really matter other than yeah, it gave me something to work on for a while. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Now there's one other thing I want to try to make this weekend. And we're going to start with the old cardboard trick again. But what I want is a little bracket. So you, you've seen brackets like this on swing arms, nitrous bikes forever. And you've seen nitrous bottles forever. Well, obviously this all goes in the swing arm like so. So, you know, that would be clamped in your swing arm. And I want to put something off of the bracket here on the back side. I want to have something kind of run down and then a little tab to hang under this nitrous bottle that'll help me when I go to you know load the bottle from the top. I can just set the bottle in and it'll sit on there and then I can clamp this bracket on tight. And uh, even if the bracket were to come oh, come loose during a pass or something, or I just overlooked it, the bottle is rattling around. Um, it should still sit on that tab on the bottom. So we're going to make up a little bracket out of cardboard here. And what I want to do is have it start something like this. So let's doodle quick. Maybe I should use a marker. Not that one. This one will work. So what I want is something about as wide as that bottle bracket is. That'll be the top side. So we'll have a hole here and a hole there. So we come down, I'm going to have it taper in a little bit, taper in both sides to about an inch wide across the middle. Then I'm going to have a little tab that runs down the back side of the bottle. And then we'll have a round foot. This is starting to look bad, but trust me, it'll, it'll be okay looking when I'm done. And what I'm going to do is have a bend at the bottom here for the foot that'll be under the bottle. I'll do a bend here and we'll angle back into here. So there'll be, this line doesn't matter, I was just showing how wide it's going to be. But there'll be a bend here, a little kink here, and a little kink here. <clears throat> and what we'll do is I'll make a little better looking version real quick, cut it out, and then mock it up and hopefully you'll get a better view of what I'm talking about. So this is kind of uh, what I'm going for here. It's a little cardboard template, nothing fancy. And what it's going to do is if I tip this so you can see, when this is in the swing arm, this will be bolted between the bracket and the swing arm. And it'll kind of kink over, and that foot will be on the bottom of the bottle. It doesn't take much, just a little extra piece. And uh, that'll make getting the bottles in and out a little easier. I ain't got to hold the bottom with one foot. Or one foot, yeah, one foot. One hand while I try to, uh, I guess I could use a foot. But just don't have to hold the bottle with one hand while I clamp the bracket with the other one. So a little convenience piece and a little safety piece in one. So we'll get going on that. And uh, fortunate for you, it's going to happen fast. Because I'm going to do this at work and not in my 40 degree shop. And just like that, through the magic of television, uh, we're back out here after I made the little bracket I was talking about. See, does that make sense to you? I added a little cutouts in here just for a little bit of style. Um, yeah, most of the stuff I do really matters nothing, does nothing, but it gives me a reason to work on stuff and make things. And I have my theories behind why I do things and what I want. And whether it works or not can be proven or disproven, but... Yeah, what the hell, I'm out here doing something, right? So, now hopefully you get the picture here. That'll be bolted on, just like that. Kind of hard to see 
be in a black piece like that. And then obviously those holes will line up. But whatever. Um, <clears throat> it was kind of funny cutting these holes out. Um, I used my uh, CNC router that uh, me and the guy at work designed up. And uh, it works pretty slick. So check this thing out. So after a couple hours of monkeying around with that and not losing any fingers, eyeballs, or anything else, um, got it done. So let's start bolting some stuff together and working on this thing. I'm tired of talking. Starting with the easy one. I'm going to put the gauge in my uh, T-fitting on the swing arm air tank. A little uh, Schrader fill valve, but a little gauge go in there. Bam. A little bit of blue Loctite, and we'll be set. Nice and simple, nice and clean. Try to rotate this so I can see it from up on top. Right about there. That'll work. What do you think? Nice and easy. On to the next. Now we're going to go ahead and put the, uh, not just bracket, on with the uh, newly made um, bracket holder, whatever you want to call it. A little bit of Loctite on these guys, never hurt anything. Try to get this all lined up with my gloves on here. Get one started. Got one. Let's get the other one on here and wrap this up. One and two. There it is. And now we put the bottle in and see how this all goes together. Come on. Get it turned the right way. Bam, just like that. That worked pretty slick. I'm gonna put a little bit of a there we go. Give her a little what for, get her going the right way. Just like that. Now I can go ahead and hook my line up and tighten that clamp. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm pretty excited about how that turned out. Cool. Obviously, it's not the first time I've had this on, but how much better does this look? If you saw the bike before, you might understand, but I'm pretty thrilled about this. It ain't the lightest piece on the planet, but I got a boost controller. That'll make up for the extra five ounces that weighs. Sweet, one more done. Next up, we're gonna get this bracket done so I can get my chain fit.
well there she be that's the new one we're gonna run I'm feeling a whole lot better about that um, the Shinko uh, yeah like I said I had two of these first one it actually chunked real bad this one's got one little spot out of it but I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw it away nobody else needs to have that even as a freebie it's just not worth giving away but yeah I'm liking how this looks how it feels just it just seems like a better tire so I got a lot better faith on that one in the front um, didn't really have a problem beating up the uh, small tire on this wheel this this the Shinko uh, struggled with when I went to do that one so Michelin actually beat it up pretty nice maybe it was I don't know, maybe because it's a little bit wider. I don't know, but whatever. That's my little air compressor over there I used. No big deal. Um, I may have had to fast forward the uh, last segment with me changing this tire. Um, working out in the cold, slip and sliding on the ice. Uh, the tire wasn't really working with me. Uh, it was just a mess and the language got out of hand. So that one, uh, that'll just go by kind of quick. So let's run it. New tire is mounted and ready to go. Let's put it back together. There she is, all wrapped up. Everything's tight, brakes work, good to go. I think that's about enough for today. I got the front tire done after digging that whole thing out. I had to cut the hitch off my truck to put that thing in there. I uh, got that little bottle bracket on there, chain is on, chain's adjusted, chain roller, front sprocket, seat pan. I think we're good for now. I'm calling it a day. I want tacos, and there's a lot of tacos to be had. <laughs>